All right, thank you all for tuning in to WGHC LP Chicago 98.3 FM. And happy 2022. This is the year 2022. And welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And essentially, this is my first show of the year. So I know I've been gone. I've been out for about three weeks due to travel. Right, I was actually out in a few destinations, um, Ghana being one of them. So I actually went back home to Ghana. And then on top of that, I also was in San Antonio this past weekend for a business conference. So definitely glad to be back. Happy 2022, this year, 2022. I feel it's gonna be a great and memorable year. I think it's gonna be a fabulous year and will make a lot of impact, right? A lot of impact for a lot of many, a lot of lives to come. And if you need anything from me or my firm, please don't hesitate to reach out and just let me know. All right, I'm more than happy to help out with any questions, clarifications, guidance, things of that nature. So sorry for the slight late start today. You know, just getting things settled and locked and loaded for 2022, happy 2022. Um, this is the year 2022, 2022, right? Um, it's, it's a little hard to say for some reason. I don't know why, but 2022, 2022, there's so many twos in there. So happy 2022, happy new year to everybody that is listening today. Welcome to my show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. My name is Jeff Badu and I'm your host for today. And you're listening live on WJCLP. 98.3 FM Chicago. We are live on the radio on 98.3 FM. You can tune in in your car right now to 98.3 FM, or you can go to WGHCRadio.org. Once again, that's WGHCRadio.org. 
org. All right. We're also streaming live on Facebook and Instagram. I see we got two team members from the Body Tax Services team joining. I believe we have Mr. Jerry Balfour and also Ms. Desi. Ms. Desi. Shout out to Desi um, for, for joining us today. All right. And, yeah, for some reason, Facebook, I think they've changed some things around. It's Meta Company. I don't know what, what's going on with them. Uh, but I can't even see my comments on, on Facebook, right? They're saying swipe left. I actually just got a new iPhone. They're saying swipe left, but I can't even swipe left. So um, anyone that knows what's going on with Facebook, please feel free to let me know. So I cannot see the comments on Facebook, but I can on Instagram. Um, just upgraded to the iPhone 13 Pro recently. So not exactly sure what's going on with um, Facebook. All right. So today we'll be talking about 2021 market recap. What happened in the year 2021? That's what we'll be talking about today. Um, so we'll be giving you guys a quick recap as to what happened. Um, and before we do that, I do want to shout out to those listening on Facebook and Instagram. If you don't mind liking, sharing, and typing in the chat where you're listening from today. All right, just type in the chat where you're listening from. And if you don't mind liking, sharing, and also tagging a friend or two so that they can listen with you and get this valuable information with you. All right, no need to get greedy with the information. You can spread the wealth with your family and your friends. Before we get into the 2021 market recap, let's talk about what happened in the stock market over the past few weeks. And I know I haven't done a report in the past few weeks, um, but let's actually, sorry, let, let me take that back. Let's talk about what happened last week. What happened in the stock market last week? So as of January 7, 2022, which was last Friday, after beginning the week on a high note, stocks couldn't maintain the momentum ending the week in the red. Following a record close on Monday, the S&P 500 ended the week down 1.9%. Boy, oh boy, the worst start to a year since 2016. 2016. Some investors may be concerned that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates faster than had been anticipated. All right, the NASDAQ, which is mainly composed of technology stocks, went down 4.5%. It's worst week since February of 2021, not that long ago. Treasury yields continue to mount in anticipation of higher interest rates. All right, while the December employment rep report showed a slightly underwhelming 199,000 jobs were added, the unemployment rate did fall to a pandemic era low, 3.9%, right? 3.9% unemployment rate right now. Possibly adding further um, fodder for the Fed to continue its hawkish bet, basically increasing interest rates and lowering the money supply. So if you see interest rates going up, don't be surprised. It's because of the Federal Reserve and all the various things that they're doing. All right, so I, I am able to now see comments on Facebook. Miss Stacy says, welcome back. Thank you, Stacy. We go way back. Um, definitely appreciate that. But let's continue and talk about what happened last Monday. Wall Street kicked off the start of 2022 in fine fashion, recording record highs last Monday. The NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 went up 1.2%. The Dow, the Dow Jones... And the S&P 500, which is composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S., S&P 500 went up 0.6%. The global Dow went up 0.6% as well. Bond prices dipped, possibly in anticipation of rising interest rates, sending 10-year Treasury yields up 1.62%. Stocks were mixed last Tuesday, with the Dow reaching its second record high in 2022, while a tech route pulled the NASDAQ down 1.3%. The Russell 2000 and the Global Dow each gained more than 1% on the day, while the S&P 500, 
was little change. Last Wednesday, equities fell. Equities fell last Wednesday following the release of the minutes from the Federal Reserve meeting, raising the prospect for multiple, not just one, but multiple interest rate hikes beginning in the near term. So interest rates are set to increase in the near term. Investors don't like that because that's less money they can invest or it costs them more money to invest into the market. So they, they start pulling back. They start pulling out for whatever reason, right? Um, so that's what happened last Wednesday. The The NASDAQ did go down. The NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 went down 3.3%. S&P 500 went down 1.9%. Stocks continued to trend lower last Thursday, while only the Russell 2000 advanced by, by the close of trading. The Dow fell 0.5%, and the global Dow went down 0.4%. The NASDAQ and the S&P 500 were also flat. All right. By the way, for everyone that's listening out there, please protect yourself. Please stay healthy. We don't want to see anybody sick, anybody dying or anything like that. So please protect yourself. Do whatever you got to do. Wear masks in public places. Um, you know, and just, just watch your surroundings, right? Just protect yourself. Just something I feel I need to mention on a on, on a place like this. We don't know what's happening in the world, to be honest, with this COVID-19 madness. Omicron variant, Delta variant, Zeta variant, all these all these variants in the world. Um, nobody knows what's really happening and if we're truly in the end times um, as it's written in the Bible. All right, so equities continued or couldn't reverse course last Friday, closing the day in the red. All right, so equities closed the day in the red last Friday. Um, Russia 2000 went down 1.1%, followed by the NASDAQ, which went down 1%, and then the S&P 500 uh, went down 0.4%. All right. So with that, um, so far this year, the Dow Jones is down 0.29%. The NASDAQ, which is composed mainly of technology stocks, is down... 4.53%. 4.53. Those are the tech stocks. The S&P 500 is down 1.87%. The Russell 2000 is down 2.92%. The global Dow, however, the global equities are up 2.3%. Interest rates are still at a dead 0%. What to look forward to this week? Inflation data for December is available this week. With the release of the Consumer Price Index, CPI for short, and the Producer Price Index, PPI for short, the CPI rose 6.8% through November, while the PPI vaulted 9.6%. Holy cow, that's high. Neither index is projected to decrease based on December's figures. What that means are things are getting more expensive. Inflation. Inflation is here. Gas prices are getting more expensive. I just paid for parking in Chicago. Parking is now $2.50 per hour. Last year, $2.25. The year before that, $2. Right? And then before that, it was it was lower. At some point in Chicago, as I recall, it was only a quarter, a quarter an hour to park. One quarter, 25 cents. And that was about 20 years ago. Now in the city of Chicago, it has since went up to $2.50 per hour. And downtown, about $5 to $10 per hour. Right? So things have gotten a lot more expensive. What does this mean for you? You can't fall behind. When the world is rising, you can't be falling behind. Number one, invest your money. Well, number one, make sure that you are essentially getting the value that you deserve or desire for, the, for, the, for what you provide to society. Or let me put this another way. For the value that you provide to society, please make sure you're properly compensated for that. Number one, so increase your pay. Number two, invest your money. There's two reasons why we invest. Number one is to beat inflation. Inflation... And I'll get you the exact numbers. But based off what I'm reading, inflation is at about 7%. 
7%. That means you would have needed to make 7% on your money last year just to keep up with the world, just to make ends meet, basically. Right? Just to make ends meet. And shout out to Desi for the notes right there. All right? Number two, number one is increase your pay. Number two, invest your money. So there's two reasons why we invest. Number one is to beat inflation. Inflation, 7%. Things went up 7% last year in 2021. And for for certain things, even more than that, car used car prices, I read that they went up about 29% last year. Right, Used cars. Can you imagine when cars used to depreciate? Now they're appreciating because of supply chain bottlenecks, delays, and all the other things, ship chip shortages and everything like that. So you have to invest your money. If you don't invest, you'll be behind. At a 7% inflation rate, within the next 10 to 15 years, you would have lost all your money if your money didn't grow by at least 1%. Or if it didn't grow at all, you would have lost all your money, basically. Meaning $100,000 today would literally be worth nothing in the future, right? 15 years from now. If you don't invest that 100000 it gets depleted in your bank, right? It just sits there, and, and, and it's dead, and you lose the entire value of that money, 100% of the value. Number one reason why we invest is to beat inflation. Number two is to take advantage of compound interest. Now, we'll get more into this in the report, but the stock market, let me give you the numbers here. The S&P 500 closed the year at 26.89% increase. The S&P 500, which is composed of the top 500 companies in the, in the U.S., went up 26.89% in 2021. 26.89%. My goodness. My goodness. So you get to take advantage of compound interest is the number two reason why we invest. Can you imagine making 26? Let's round up to 27% on your money. Even at infl- even with inflation at 7%, you still just made 20% on your money. Right? And shout out to King Rich on, on IG. So the notion is you got to invest your money in something. It can be real estate. It can be the stock market. It can be cryptocurrency. For me, my personal favorite is real estate. I'm a real estate guy. I'm a real estate investor. Um, you know, so for me personally, real estate is my bread and butter. That's how I eat, basically. Right? Of course, we run a tax firm. Um, we run a, a life insurance company. We run a foundation that teaches financial literacy, and we run some other companies as well. Um, Happy tax season, by the way. Tax season is officially um, kicking off very soon, right? We'd be more than happy to help you out at Badu Tax Services. Um, Just send us an email at support at badutaxservices.com to get started. Once again, that's support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at badutaxservices.com to get started. All right? We can get you going um, if you want a free 15 minute discovery call just to get to know more about your situation and what it is we can best assist you with. Um, We're expecting a big tax season this year. 2022 is a big tax season, big, big tax season. And tomorrow, shameless plug, tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. Central, we're hosting an event called 2022 Tax Season um, Tips and Changes. So 2022 tax season tips and changes on Zoom, right, on Zoom. That's from tomorrow night from 6 to 7 p.m. Central on Zoom to RSVP. Simply um, send a text, right, send a text to send the words tax tips, the words tax tips to 773-819-5675. Once again, send the words tax tips to RSVP, right, to 773-819-5675. Uh, we'll be hosting that tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. Central. Nothing too crazy, just an hour. You get to ask questions. You get to communicate, converse, all that good stuff. 
Shout out to King Rich. He says, Badu Tax is the truth. Absolutely. Tap in. Appreciate you, brother. I uh, definitely appreciate you for, for that compliment there. Um, so, yeah. Without further ado, let's talk about what happened in the market in 2021. We got about 30 minutes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to WJC LP 98.3 FM, Chicago. We're live on the radio on 98.3 FM in Chicago. You can tune into your cars right now as we speak. You can also tune into WGHCradio.org. Once again, that's WGHCradio.org. Now, as you're listening, I do want to shout out to those on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in. And to those on IG, Instagram. If you don't mind liking, sharing, tagging a friend or two in the video, and letting us know in the comments where you're listening from today so that we can give you a shout out. We host a show every Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. Central. Sometimes a slight delay, right, as we get things set up. So apologies for that. Uh, but we host a show every Monday, 7 to 8 p.m. Central. It is recorded, so you'll catch it live on my IGTV page and also Facebook. Um, and we post it on my YouTube channel, the Jeff Badu YouTube channel. To check out or to find out more information about Infinite Resources, go to jeffbadu.com. Once again, that's jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. I do have a book that's coming out pretty soon. I will be releasing the title um, as soon as deemed feasible. But I do have a book. My fourth book is coming out this year, most likely this month. I encourage everybody to check that out. It's the part two of my Infinite Expansion book. And encourage everybody to check that out when it comes out. It will be on Amazon via um, the audio, e the ebook, so the Amazon Kindle, and also physical copy. And then we'll also have an, an audio book as well um, for the books coming out pretty soon. All right, but without further ado, let's talk about it. What happened in 2021? So for me personally, I had a great 2021. It was the best year of my life so far. And I pray that your 2021 went great. I encourage you, if you haven't already, reflect on 2021 as a whole. What happened? Did you achieve your goals? Did you set any goals? And then what can you do to improve in 2022? I encourage you to set a vision board with at least three to five items of things that you want to achieve. And check out the book, Infinite Expansion, How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance. Right, that's on Amazon. Infinite Expansion, How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance to set your vision board for 2022 and not forget about it. Right? It's one thing to set it. It's another thing to actually go through with it and implement it. I encourage you to do that. If you need anything, any help, any support from myself, from my team, just reach out to me um, or reach out to us. You can go to the website at jeffbadu.com jeffbadu.com j-e-f-f-b-a-d-u.com we're gonna have a fabulous year no matter what no matter what happens this year with all these variants and all that we're going to have a great 2022 2022 will be the best year of our lives i know it i feel it um, i'm on a journey this year to help a lot of people and i pray that you'll be along that journey as well and you've already taken the right step by joining us today so I do applaud you and shout you out for that. But let's talk about what happened in the markets in 2022. This one I need to sit back a little bit and, you know, just get a little comfortable. I need to get a little comfortable because it's a long report. So normally when we do these reports, um, we sometimes open it up for discussion. So today is more education by nature. Every beginning of the year, every year, Every start to the year, we do a recap of what happened in the market the previous year, right? So the first radio show of the year is always a market recap of the previous year. So in 2021, the year 2021 was one of extreme change. January saw the inauguration of President Uncle Joe Biden, Uncle Joe Biden, but not before protesters seized the United States Capitol. If you guys don't remember... Um, the Capitol was attacked last year. I don't know how it happened. I don't know who caused it, but the Capitol, the U.S. Capitol was attacked, 
right? Despite the initial, um, you know, turmoil, basically, the year started off pretty rough, let's just say. The year began with hope that increased availability of the coronavirus, COVID-19, vaccinations would lead to the end of the pandemic. I thought so, too. Um, not just because of vaccinations, of course, but also like herd immunity and all these other things. Um, I felt like at some point, everybody, right, God forbid, of course, but everybody was going to catch COVID in order to create that herd immunity. Um, and the vaccines, right, they, of course, don't prevent you from getting the virus. They only prevent you from getting really sick and going to the hospital. And I think there was some false advertisement when they were initially promoting the, the vaccines. They made it seem as if if you got the vaccine, you would be bulletproof. Nobody can touch you, basically. Uh, but it turns out that, you know, um, it did not quite, it did not quite protect us from the actual virus, at least from getting it. Um, of course, to our ignorance, we should have known from other, um, other vaccines, the flu, for example. But basically, we had hoped, the word hoped, that the vaccines would end the pandemic. Of course, it wouldn't end COVID-19. It's here to stay forever, anytime a disease gets created. But it wouldn't be a pandemic where we have to wear masks everywhere, travel restrictions, you got to show vaccine cards everywhere we go, and this and that. All the nonsense going on in the world. Unfortunately, throughout the year, the emergence of virus mutations named Delta variant, Omicron, and soon to be maybe Zeta variant, um, coupled with the uneven distribution of vaccines, saw millions more people become ill or perish after contracting the virus. I think we had even more cases in 2021 compared to 2020, which is nuts in my opinion. Nevertheless, several of the world's largest economies enjoyed notable recoveries. In the United States, two additional rounds of stimulus payments in the first quarter helped line consumers' pocketbooks which led to rapidly increasing demand for goods and services. Let me repeat that one more time. Two additional rounds of stimulus payments in the first quarter, if you guys remember, two stimulus checks last year, helped line consumers' pocketbooks, consumers, right, which led to rapidly increasing demand for goods and services. Why in the world are things so much more expensive? Because they put money in our pockets to buy things to make them more expensive. Now, of course, they didn't say, hey, go out and invest this money into the stock market or go buy a house. They said, use this money to go shopping for Christmas and maybe pay your rent on time. And of course, it wouldn't be on time at that point. Um, just pay your rent in general. Here's $1,400. Here's $600. What it did was it basically increased inflation. Um, it increased inflation to make things more expensive because there's more people buying stuff. And then, to top it all off, there was a shortage in a lot of goods. So that increased prices even more. I'm telling you, if you go to the gas station right now, you'll be shocked. Your jaw would drop. If you go to the grocery store right now, if you order something from Uber Eats, something that's supposed to be 10 bucks will turn out to be 15 Right? Your jaw would drop when you find out the price. If you've been living under a rock, for the past 12 months, your jaw will literally drop when you find out the price of certain things nowadays. Um, you know, $50, what $50 could do back in the day is nothing today. Nothing. But to continue, um, historically low lending rates, interest rates, and a rise in remote work increased the opportunity for consumers to spend. The government wants consumers to spend. All right. That's what, quote unquote, stimulates the economy. However, the rapid economic turnaround brought with it a historic surge in consumer and producer prices, labor shortages and global supply chain bottlenecks, a.k.a. inflation. Low interest rates and stimulus measures adopted by the Federal Reserve gave people more access to money and buying power. Personal income increased, as did personal consumption expenditures. 
Corporate earnings were strong. That's why the stock market was so high. Despite labor and supply shortages and lingering economic uncertainty caused by the pandemic. What happens when there's labor shortages and you can't make as much stuff? You increase the prices on that same stuff. And that's how you stay competitive. All right. That's why things are so expensive. Now, let me tell you one of the most shocking stats on the planet that you'll hear today. Let me repeat that one more time. Let me tell you one of the most shocking stats that you're about to hear in all of today, possibly all of 2021 or 2022. Sorry. I don't know why I'm a little in the past um, now. The U.S. inflation reached a nearly 40 year high late in the year. U.S. inflation reached a nearly 40 year high late in the year. 40 years, 40 year high. Things haven't been this expensive in over 40 years. As growing consumer demand was stunned by pandemic related supply constraints. Historically low mortgage rates helped propel the housing market as both the number of residential sales and property values escalated. Property values are through the roof right now. Energy prices, particularly gas prices, rose by nearly 50%. Talk about inflation. By the way, gas prices are not included in the inflation rate, nor are home prices. If we added those two in there, inflation would probably be about 20%. I kid you not. Gas prices went up 50% last year. That means if we had $6 a gallon, or let me be more realistic, if we had $3 a gallon in 2020, it went up to $4.50 per gallon in 2021. That's a 50% hike. 50% hike. Gas prices went up 50% last year. As crude oil reached more than $80 per barrel for the first time since 2014. If your eyes aren't open at this point, I don't know what will wake you up. An influx of day trading investors collided with hedge fund investors and Wall Street professionals. So-called meme trades manipulated stock prices from their sofas through collaborative investing on social media platforms. You may have heard of Reddit, um, where they were talking about GameStop and all these other crazy things. The platforms controlled the stock market, which is not supposed to happen. Cryptocurrency also gained more mainstream acceptance and attention in 2021, with a market cap of all cryptocurrencies topping $3 trillion. $3 trillion. The rapid growth of cryptocurrency also led to more government scrutiny. China's central bank declared all cryptocurrency-related transactions illegal as that country was determined to crack down on the industry. Let me repeat that one more time. China's central bank declared all cryptocurrency-related transactions illegal. Right? Illegal. China. You can't trade cryptos in China right now because they're illegal. U.S. economic recovery was highlighted by job growth and dwindling unemployment claims. All right. Employment gains average over 550,000 per month in 2021, while weekly jobless claims fell to a 52-year low in December. So apparently we're doing pretty good in the economy. So it gives the Fed room to increase interest rates. All right. Despite increasing numbers of COVID related cases, the stock market generally prospered. It was prosperous with each of the benchmark indexes posting year over year gains. Each of the market sectors also ended 2021 in the black. Overall, we experienced plenty of change in 2021, the year 2020, 2022, 2022 is likely to be a very, very interesting year as well. I think 2022 will be the best year on planet Earth so far. I'm already seeing, like, I'm, I'm already speaking it into existence. I've already seen a lot of great things, great growth, you know, great progress. And I pray the same for you too. What are you doing in 2022 that's going to help you improve, right, 
as opposed to compared to last year. Do something today that will improve your life moving forward and for many generations, many years and generations to come. So for 2021, the Dow Jones went up 18.73%. The NASDAQ, which is composed mainly of technology stocks, and I actually predicted this one, went up 21.39%. If you guys recall, in 2020, I predicted that the NASDAQ would be up by at least 20% in 2021. And it actually did. In 2022, I predict something similar. It will be up over 20%. All right, S&P 500 went up 26.89%. 26.89% S&P 500. Crazy. This is the best performance I've seen in the history of the S&P 500. 26.89%. Russell 2000 went up 13.69%. Global Dow went up 18.64%. Interest rates remain unchanged at 0%. All right. 10-year treasuries were at um, basically 60 basis points. So they're at 1.51%. I mean, that's very, very low. That's not even, that's nowhere close to inflation. So why are you in treasuries, to be honest? All right, so let's talk more specifically about certain sectors, some things that happen in some very, very specific sectors. All right. And then we'll, we will be using the entire time today because we did start a little late. So we'll, we'll end this at 8 p.m. Central. Right. I want to use all the time today to educate you about the market and some of the things that happen. So these are to give more behind the details as to what I've just gone over, the summary that I've just gone over. So in equities, throughout the year, the U.S. stock market pushed higher. Despite mounting COVID-19 cases, escalating inflation, labor shortages, supply bottlenecks, and severe, right, severe weather that hit nearly every part of the country at one time or another, Wall Street continued to post gains. Large caps, small caps, growth value, Seemingly, every market segment increased, surpassing most of the outlooks at the start of the year. While many factors contributed to the strong market performance in 2021, a few highlights included or include consistently favorable data pointing to ongoing economic recovery, strong corporate earnings throughout 2021, the acceptance of cryptocurrency as a mainstream investment, a low interest rate environment, Stimulus programs that provided consumers with cash, increase in job opportunities, and the availability of coronavirus vaccines. All right. So basically, the stock market went up really high last year. Then let's see if there's anything else that's interesting. Let's talk about interest rates. The Actually, let's talk about oil. Crude oil prices fell in 2020 as demand dwindled due to coronavirus constraints. However, crude oil prices surged in 2021 as economic growth quickly increased demand and the time needed to accelerate output to pre-pandemic levels. Pre crude oil prices opened the year around $48.50 per barrel, but rose steadily for the most of the year, reaching more than $80 per barrel, a price not seen since 2014, ultimately ending 2021 at about $75.44 per barrel. Prices at the pump also vaulted higher in 2021. The national average retail price for regular gas was $2.49 to begin 2021, and it increased to $3.41 from $2.24 to $3.41 in early November, a 50% increase. Gas prices trended marginally lower for the remainder of 2021, closing out the year at $3.27 per gallon, on December 27th, maybe because it got too cold and people weren't driving as often. I know in Chicago here, it is ridiculously cold. And I did, I basically read somewhere that our winter was going to be brutal this year. I didn't think it would be this brutal, right? So Chicago, pray we get better weather at some point in the near future. Um, but it is crazy out here in Chicago. A lot of people are relocating to warmer and more tax-friendly states, and I don't blame them. I mean, 
you know, it's like, what's the point, right? All right, let's talk about interest rates. The Federal Reserve began the year focused on promoting economic recovery. The Fed maintained the target range for the federal funds rate at 0.25% for the duration of 2021, while continuing to purchase securities on a monthly basis. $80 billion in treasuries and $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities through November. For much of the year, employment gains were solid, consumer demand for goods and services increase, and overall economic activity strengthened. However, strong consumer demand collided with pandemic-related supply constraints, driving prices higher, such that inflation hit a nearly 39-year high in November, with prices up 6.8%, 7% inflation rate, 7% inflation rate from a year ago. The Fed initially termed the rapid rise in prices transitory, right? Expecting that factors driving inflation upward would subside. However, by November, the Fed acknowledged that factors contributing to inflationary pressures were more than quote unquote transitory and agreed to begin tapering its asset purchases in December. The Fed also projected that it would increase interest rates as many as three times in 2022, right? Three times in 2022. So interest rates are expected to increase. Um, let's see what else happened. I don't have one for the real estate market yet. So let's talk about gold. Gold prices began the year at 1893.10 and closed 2021 at 1830.30, a decrease of nearly 3.3%. So gold wasn't, it didn't have the hottest year. It wasn't a sexy year for gold. During the year, gold fell to 1700 at the end of February, only to surge to 1895 in mid-May. Generally, stock market growth, rising bond yields, and a stronger dollar kept gold prices in check for most of 2021. What to look forward to in this God-blessed, God-gifted 2022? The year 2022 should bring continued economic recovery. <clears throat> Excuse me. As the United States and the world inch slowly toward normalcy following the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic, and man, we're still in the pandemic in 2022, right? Basically two years later. Um, stock markets, employment, and production should also advance. So the stock market should go up, employment should go up, and production should also go up. Inflationary pressures are likely to continue meaning things are going to get more expensive, so you need to be investing your money, which will most certainly prompt adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate, aka interest rates. So as inflation increases, the Federal Reserve at some point will step in and say, hey, this is, this is enough, right, um, and increase interest rates because they don't want it to get too high. Right? What happens if the market tanks and they can't reduce interest rates? Uh, will President Joe Biden and lawmakers be able to reach an accord on a spending bill, will there be a tax reform, a major tax reform, since 2017? Will there be a major tax reform in 2022? It was supposed to be 2021, but the tax reform never got signed, never went through Congress, right? never got passed. Will the coronavirus continue to mutate and spread? I think so. The year 2022... The year 2022 is likely to provide another roller coaster ride. And we'll leave it at that. So 2021, very interesting year. In my opinion, great year, phenomenal year, awesome year. But 2022 has a lot in store, a lot in stake. I think it will be an abundant and prosperous rest of the year. Let's make it as such. Let's really go out there and achieve all of our goals, our visions, our dreams, all the things that we set out to achieve. Let's make this a great year. Let's step our games up in all the areas of our lives, whether it be physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially. Right? Let's do something that will better our lives for many more years to come. I encourage you to make 2022 your best year yet. Take control. Take hold of a great 2022. Be positive. Have a positive mindset. Go into every situation from a, you know, 
optimistic approach. Don't go in there with a go, don't go in there with a pessimistic mindset. Go in there with an optimistic approach because it will be a, a great year. Whether we like it or not, 2022 will be a great year. It don't matter what happens in 2022. More variants, increased interest rates, right? Bankruptcies, uh, whatever it is, we will have a great 2022. I'm speaking it into existence. Before we close for the day, please attend the event tomorrow, 2022 Tax Season Tips and Changes. Once again, 2022 Tax Season Tips and Changes. That's from 6 to 7 p.m. Central tomorrow, right? 6 to 7 p.m. Central tomorrow on Zoom. Free event. Um, the flyers posted on Facebook and Instagram. We'll post the flyer again tomorrow. Want to see everybody there to RGP text the words tax tips, tax tips to 773-819-5675. Once again, 773 773- 8195675. I do want to thank you greatly for tuning in to my show, Money Talks, on WJC LP 98.3 FM Chicago. We're live here every Monday, every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Central. I pray that you gain wisdom. I pray that you gain abundance in your life from listening to the show. There'll be a lot of events this year. We'll probably have over 50 events and then another 50 radio shows. So about 100 events total. Uh, we'll have a great year. Because we declared as such, it is our year, 2022. With that being said, my name is Jeff Badu. And I look forward to continuously and consistently delivering you all some content. So thank you for tuning in. And I hope you have a great evening and a great rest of the 2022. Thank you.